Let's kick our security conversation off with the idea of authentication and encryption. These are going to be two very useful techniques that we're going to have to incorporate into our wireless networks if we want to consider our wireless network to be secure. So let's go and take a look at each one and how we can expect to in integrate them into our designs. Let's start with the concept of authentication. Authentication is the process by which I prove who somebody is. This is important because we know that there's only certain people who are supposed to be on the network. And so this not only can determine whether or not I access the network, whether that's wired or wireless, it doesn't matter. Or giving access to the network can depend on my authentication either way. But then furthermore, not just whether I have access, but also what I can access. Because for example, if I'm logging in as a internal user, meaning that I belong to the organization and such, then I should have access to corporate resources, such as, for example, the file server. I should gain access to the files. Maybe there's an intranet. I mean, there could be all kinds of resources that are available for internal employees. However, I might also be a guest. Maybe I'm somebody who just showed up. I could be a patient in a hospital. I could be, you know, just a somebody who's a client or a customer who's showing up. And so at this point, primarily what I care about is internet access. And maybe that's just for the sake of entertainment, but it could also be related to the reason I'm here. Maybe I need to look up important information uh, that has to do with, well, again, whatever reason I've shown up on this site. And so giving people internet access is going to be very important in those situations. And so all of this comes back to this idea of who somebody is. Is it somebody that I know that belongs to the organization that I'm going to want to follow this path down? And if I'm a guest, then I'm going to want to follow a very different path as far as network access is concerned. So how do I go about proving who somebody is? Well, the most common way that I prove that I am Jeff Kish is to provide my username and password. I'm going to log into my corporate network by providing my username and password. In theory, I have just proven that I am who I say I am because I am the only person who's supposed to know my password. And so this is supposed to be proof that I am who I say I am. Now, these days we understand that passwords leak. Uh, we don't like to use secure passwords all the time. I mean, there's a lot of flaws with our password systems. And so this is why we've introduced the concept of multi-factor authentication or MFA. Multi-factor authentication says, all right, not only do I need a username and password, that would be one factor. So I'll just say username and password here for the first one. But then the second one is going to be maybe a text. Maybe I get a text on my phone, or maybe I have to pull up an app and provide a one-time password from an application. And so the idea here is now I've got two different factors as part of my authentication process, and I can add a third and a fourth, which is why we call it multi-factor authentication. But the theory here is that even if somebody were to steal the password, yeah, that does check off the first factor, and maybe they could try to access my corporate network because they have my username and password. However, even if they steal my username and password, they would not have access to my phone, in theory. Now, if somebody were to steal my phone, then of course they could get a text or fire up that application potentially. But maybe I have my phone locked down. You could call that a third factor to the authentication process. But generally speaking, the odds that they're going to not only steal my password, but also steal my phone, those are pretty low odds. And this is why we typically feel pretty comfortable by deploying just these two factors. Now, in the world of Wi-Fi, we've all connected to a lot of networks that don't require authentication. So sometimes authentication is going to be required, and sometimes authentication is not going to be required. We'll say no authentication in those situations. Now, in most cases, no authentication should only be used for guest services, and oftentimes we're thinking about Wi-Fi hotspots. Because I would never want to say everybody can join my Wi-Fi network from a corporate perspective. So when we say authentication is required, this is going to usually be how I deploy my enterprise wireless designs. I need to make sure that I'm taking this into account when I'm performing my designs. To say, okay, how am I going to require my users to authenticate? Because yes, it should be considered a requirement when it comes to enterprise level designs. Now, the way we go about doing this can be a little bit different. We can still require a username and password. Uh, we could technically go so far as to use multi-factor authentication, texting and apps and such. However, we can also use the concept of certificates. Certificates are basically a digitally signed file. And so this is just a file that sits on my mobile device, whether that's a laptop or a phone or what have you. 
and this file is provided by IT in some fashion. It can be automatically provisioned, it can be manually provisioned, but either way, this certificate is a special file that in theory means that uh, I validated that this machine is allowed to be on the network. Now, if somebody were to steal my username and password, they might still be able to use that machine to log in. However, again, this is like the phone situation. Uh, the odds of them stealing my password and getting my device, these are pretty low, uh, low odds. And so by making it so they have to steal the device itself, hopefully we're increasing the odds that we keep our network safe. You know, they couldn't fire up their own laptop and just use my username and password to get on, for example. And naturally, once I do all of this, this is where we come back to the idea of having access to all of the you know, corporate resources that are available. And I can get those resources by logging into the Wi-Fi, not just the wired network. Now, next, we want to talk about the concept of encryption. Encryption it typically goes alongside authentication. We like to talk about both at the same time. However, they do handle two different problems. And encryption is focused on what we call data privacy. Data privacy means that the information that I'm sending stays private. And this is a challenge because I could be on my laptop in a public space and I'm sending my wireless signals out. Now, yeah, the access point might be over here, and we oftentimes like to draw our wireless signals as if they're you know, going a particular direction. But at this point in our CWNA, CWDP journey, we understand that our wireless signals are really propagating out in three-dimensional space, meaning that even though I want my signals to go up to this access point, they're also going over here where somebody has a phone and over here where somebody has a laptop. And so these devices, there is nothing stopping us from just listening in. So they could be listening into this communication and that might be a concern if I'm speaking some level of sensitive data here. And so that sensitive data is now being shared to the clients that are listening in simply because we're using a medium without bounds. I'm not sending this on a wire into the network, for example. At that point, they'd have to somehow tap that wire and listen in on the signal that's being sent. But because we have this boundless medium of wireless you know, pro signal propagation, well, that's why other devices can now listen in. And this is a huge security risk when it comes to, again, that sensitive data. So we want to use encryption. And encryption basically means that we are forming a point-to-point -point connection. So what we do here is we use an encryption key to basically scramble the information. And the device on the other end that's supposed to be receiving this, it can descramble or what we call de-encrypt that data and send it onto the network. Whereas if somebody else were to receive the scrambled information, so this is just a client that's listening in, they're not going to be able to figure out how to unscramble that message. Now, there are plenty of different encryption standards out there, and this has evolved as far as Wi-Fi has used it over the course of time. And so we started with TKIP. TKIP stands for Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, and this was used by the original WPA. And we'll be talking about WPA here coming up shortly. Now, WPA, as our you know, mechanism for encryption and authentication, this has also evolved over time. And so when WPA2 came out, we used a different encryption algorithm we call the Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES. Now third, we are up to WPA3, and so we're going to use something we call the Galois Counter Mode Protocol, or GCMP. And so these are the encryption algorithms, but the concept is the same. I mean, all of these are going to be used in this manner. The difference is simply how easy it is for this device down here, if it's truly a bad guy, somebody who knows what they're doing, uh, is it easy for them to crack that? And as holes have been discovered in TKIP and AES, for example, we have continued to evolve the standard to the point that we are now using GCMP. And so let's make sure as we perform our wireless designs that we're putting some intentional thought into how we're going to do authentication, but also how we're going to do encryption. So at this point, this is mostly a definition of terms. We need to understand that authentication is proving who I am so I can start to apply restrictions to what I'm supposed to be doing on the network, whether I'm allowed access at all, and if I am access, what resources I should have access to. Now, encryption, on the other hand, this is nothing to do with what I'm allowed to access. This is simply enforcing data privacy, meaning that you can't understand the information I'm sending to that access point, even if you can listen into my message, because it has been effectively scrambled by one of these protocols. And so we see that over the course of time, Wi-Fi has evolved the encryption standard it uses. We used to use TKIP, WPA2, which is still in a lot of use today, uses AES. And that's largely a fine standard, but there have been a few holes in it. And so that's why WPA3 is out, and that uses GCMP as the underlying encryption method. 
I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.